There's an old saying, which is that assumption is the mother of all disaster. Assumption is the mother of all disaster. And the massive assumptions being made by Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP at the moment will lead to just that for the great nation of Scotland. The Scottish First Minister yesterday proudly announced that UK pensions would continue to be paid in full by British taxpayers in the event of Scotland leaving the Union. And of course, if they leave, people are calling that Skegsit. So UK taxpayers will continue to pay Scottish pensions. That's what she said. She said that Scots who have made state pension contributions to the Treasury would still receive those payments. And her official spokesman went further and claimed that the UK government would be expected to contribute to the pensions, except that they were referencing comments made in 2014 by the then pensions minister, Steve Webb, comments which are more out of date than a Bobby Davro stand-up routine. Mr Webb quickly clarified his remarks, saying that it was for the independent Scottish government to pay its own state pensions. Mrs Sturgeon has obviously been too busy for the last eight years to notice that correction. But why let the facts get in the way of a good headline? But Nicola Sturgeon is courting disaster for Scotland with multiple assumptions. For example, that the Scottish currency, in the event of Skexit, would be the pound. Well, pray tell me, who has this supreme leader negotiated that deal with? How will Scotland replace expected billions in oil revenue now they've said they won't exploit new oil fields in the North Sea? Or what about Scotland's share of the UK national debt? That one seems to have been swept under the carpet too. There are a lot of dark surprises lurking under the tightly woven sporran of the SNP. What would the national security consequences of Scottish independence be? We've heard very little from the First Minister on that one, other than a determination to get rid of nuclear weapons, which notwithstanding the natural courage of the Scottish people and its rich pedigree in combat, is hardly going to make Scotland safer. To be fair, and Brexit supporters will understand this, there is an emotional and cultural argument for independence and for sovereignty, except that the SNP plan is to replace so-called rule from Westminster with rule from Brussels, subsuming Scotland into an even larger and more all-encompassing political union, the EU. Out of the frying pan, into the fire. And if you want to see how the EU treats smaller nation states, exhibit A, Greece, a country effectively bankrupted by a deal so unfavourable it would have Donald Trump suffering pangs of guilt. The EU only know the art of the bad deal. And will the EU accept an independent Scotland and therefore risk Catalonia leaving Spain? And how would the EU protect the single market given that Scotland has a land border with England? Questions, questions. So whilst the emotional and sovereignty argument for Skegsit exists, and it may have some merit, the economic one is non-existent. And the economy matters, as we have seen during this pandemic. In fact, this pandemic has been the ultimate advert for the union. It was the decisive buying power of the UK that saw a world-class vaccine rollout. EU member states were left biting our dust. That was a British success story. And what about our borrowing power? UK PLC with its enviable credit rating, was able to borrow money at next to no cost, which allowed the administrations in Edinburgh, Belfast, Cardiff and London to bankroll the economy, protect livelihoods and save thousands of businesses and millions of jobs. Look, Scotland has a high quality, dynamic, industrious economy. Scotland punches above its weight and always has done. But please don't tell me that an independent Scotland would have the ability to borrow as cheaply and in such volume as the whole of the United Kingdom. I lived and studied in Scotland for four years. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world with the best people. Art, culture, manufacturing, education, 
digital expertise, medicine, innovation, design, food and drink, of course, they've got it all. But it's a great disservice to the people of Scotland to assume, as many in England do, that if you're Scottish, you automatically want independence, or even that if you're an SNP voter, that you want independence. Not so. A vote for the SNP does not always mean a vote for independence. Scots already know what life would be like if Skexit ever happened. Under Sturgeon, Scotland is becoming a woke dystopia. Civil servants are being told to put their pronouns on emails. Children as young as four will be able to change their name and gender at school without their parents' consent. And there's a very real possibility that if you tell a dirty joke at home or make a remark that is loosely defined as hate speech, you could be arrested. Going to jail for saying things in your own house over a cup of tea with friends or family. Just let that one sink in. Even Kim Jong-un himself would say you've overstepped the mark there. It's a good hat. It suits him. Don't get me wrong, Nicola Sturgeon is a very impressive politician. Arguably a far more astute operator than our current beleaguered PM, who is mired, of course, in a set of scandals around lockdown-breaking parties. And unlike Boris, Nicola runs a tight ship. She's got her ship together. The disarray in Westminster and the chaos at number 10 imperils the union and adds lustre to Sturgeon's argument about leaving. But they mustn't. In my view, things are going from mad to bad to worse in Scotland. Don't forget they've had more prolonged COVID restrictions, bankrolled by the UK government, of course, with no better COVID outcomes. All of the consequences of restrictions with none of the advantages. England is now free, but in Scotland, masks are still required in shops. There are plastic screens everywhere, social distancing in retail and hospitality venues. Customer flow is still being regulated. They've got divisive vaccine passports. And kids in Scotland are still stuck with those filthy rags all day long in the classroom. And how about this for the definition of madness? The latest act of lunacy is a plan to quite literally chop the bottoms off doors in Scotland's schools to aid ventilation. That's right, they're going to chop the bottoms off doors in Scotland. What a waste of trees. They are barking mad. What a bunch of planks. Who knew that the answer to Scotland's COVID spread would come in the form of Nick Knowles and the cast of DIY SOS with his big saw? Now, the good people of Scotland need an SOS out of this madness. They need an escape, but it's not Skegsit. First of all, when is this obsession with stopping the virus going to end? especially Omicron, which we know is milder than a night out with Sir Cliff Richard. Why in particular is there this obsession with keeping COVID away from kids? With teachers vaccinated and kids themselves at such famously low risk, chopping up school doors and other measures just doesn't make any sense. Even fire brigades in Scotland have said that this will be dangerous as it's against fire regulations. But why let the facts get in the way of a good headline? It's for your health, folks. We're following the science. We will all obey in the People's Republic of Nicola. I actually think there's an argument to grant Scotland an independence referendum at the earliest opportunity. Lance the boil, I say. Just as Vladimir Putin has his troops stationed on the border of Ukraine, it's the politically cunning Nicola Sturgeon whose threats to take Scotland out of the Union are the source of her power. Grant her a referendum, Scotland stays, and it's game over. I know that's a risky strategy, but in the end, I'm not afraid. Someone should just do the maths, outline the numbers at play, and show the Scottish public how high the economic, societal, infrastructural and national security bill would actually be. It's my personal view that the Scottish people are far too wise and far too sensible to sign up to unending rule by Nicola Queen of Scots.